Okay, in this video, this is a an example problem for accounting for stock for stock transactions. So the problem is XYZ Corp was organized on June 30th, 2008. After two and a half years of profitable operations, the equity section of XYZ's balance sheet was as follows. And as you can see here, Contributed capital included common stock at $5 par. They had 500,000 $500, shares authorized, 300,000 issued and outstanding. Paid in capital in excess of par was 1.1 million. Retained earnings was 3.6 million. And total stockholders' equity was 16.1 million. During 2011, the following transaction transactions affected stockholders equity so on January 31st they reacquired 20,000 shares of common stock at $41 this Treasury stock was recorded at cost on April 1st 2011 they declared a 30 percent stock dividend this applies to all issued stock and on April 30th 2011 they declared an 80 cent cash dividend applies only to outstanding stock on June 1, 2011, they issued the stock dividend and paid the cash dividend. And on August 31, 2011, they sold all Treasury stock at $44. So, for this January 31, 2011 transaction, we have that right here. On January 31, 2011, we are, are going to credit Treasury stock for $820,000 and debit cash for 820,000. And the reason we do that is this is for the 20,000 shares that they bought back at $41 per share. Okay. <clears throat> so in case you couldn't see that, this is again this is for the 20,000 shares that they bought back at $41 a share. 20,000 times 41 equals 820,000. And obviously, you paid cash, so you credit cash. For this April 1st transaction where they declared a 30% stock dividend that applies to all issued stock, um, you will credit, sorry, you will debit retained earnings for 450000 and you will credit stock dividends distributable for 450000 So this is the, the entry you make um, when these are declared. So it's just declared so far. Okay, and so the reason, now this retained earnings debit, this could also be to paid in capital in excess of par. You could really do either one. For the stock dividend, so we have 300,000 300, shares issued. So you times that by 0.3, 30%. That gives us 90,000 shares distributable. Um, again, it's $5 par. So you times the 90,000 by $5, that gives you the entry amount of 450,000. And again, this de the debit in this case could also be to paid in capital in excess of par. That or retained earnings. Okay, so that's that. For April 30th, the company declared an 80 cent cash dividend. So for that entry, you debit dividends for 224,000. You credit dividends payable for 224,000. This is pretty straightforward. 280,000 shares. Now that the 280 notice is because they did buy back 20,000 in treasury stock. So it's 280 times 80 cents, that's 224,000. This is pretty easy. Now on June 1st, 2011, they issued the stock dividend and they paid the cash dividend. Okay, so for June 1st, these are our entries. Okay, first you debit stock dividends distributable. And the reason you do that is this is for issuing the stock dividend, which was the $450,000 entry that we made on April 1st. Okay, and the dividends payable 
we are debiting dividends payable because we credited dividends payable in the last entry when the dividends were declared. So we're taking that back because the dividends are now being paid. So you uh, you credit or sorry you debit dividends payable for the two hundred twenty four thousand. Now your credits is a credit to common stock five dollar par. This is for the ninety thousand shares that are actually being issued times five dollars, and the cash is the cash paid out for the eighty cent per share dividend. Okay, now on August 31st, they sold all treasury stock at $44. So these are our entries for that. So on August 31st, we debit cash for $1,144,000. Now here you have, you have the $20,000 original treasury shares, and when we did the 30% stock dividend. 30% um, of the 20,000 is 6,000 so you now have 26,000 shares of treasury stock. So that 26,000 times $44 was the share price we sold them at was equals 1,144,000. Now this, uh, don't let this confuse you, the treasury stock we credit this for the amount that we recorded because all we paid for the treasury stock was this 820,000 right here. That's all we paid for it. And it was recorded at cost right here. So, it was a 41,000 times or $41 times 20,000. So that is what we credit to treasury stock because that is what it was worth. Um, anything above that, the balance, the 324 um, this just goes to paid in capital from treasury stock because that's what it, you know, that was the amount that we received for selling it. So it's the 1144000 minus the cost of the treasury stock of 820000 And that is the whole problem.